The Athenians were now looking for a leader who might fulfill their newfound sense of imperial glory. They found a man who seemed the perfect reflection of this new ideal. A man who would change the face of Athens forever. A man named Pericles. It's probably not a more important figure in the history of classical Greece than Pericles. He was the leader of Athens at the height of its power and of its artistic achievement. He was the figure associated appropriately with bringing Athenian democracy to its climax, to its height. But Pericles was no obvious democrat like Themistocles, for he had been born into one of Athens' most elite families. And perhaps because of his aristocratic origins, Pericles knew what the people of Athens now wanted. A city fit to rule an empire. It seems clear that Pericles had in mind to create a city whose greatness would be admired by the people who lived there, by everybody else in the Greek world, well into the future. Pericles announced a glorious new vision to the Athenian assembly. All kinds of enterprises should be created which will provide inspiration for every art, find employment for every hand. We must devote ourselves to acquiring things that will be the source of everlasting fame. Pericles turned his attention to the Acropolis the sheer peak in the center of Athens, home of the city's patron goddess, Athena. Twenty years earlier, the Persians had burnt down the temples that stood here. Ever since, the Athenians had left these ruins untouched as a memorial to those killed in the war. But Pericles had other ideas. He proposed a massive reconstruction plan. At its center would be a new Parthenon, a temple to Athena. And it would be one of the most astonishing buildings of the ancient world. This new construction program was of unprecedented magnitude and expense. The Parthenon in particular was extraordinarily expensive. It was filled with all sorts of architectural refinements. Pericles planned to spend over 5,000 talents in the first year alone. A total budget of more than a billion dollars in today's terms. His project would require 20,000 tons of marble. The Athenian quarries at Mount Pentelicus, just outside the city, resounded as hundreds of workmen traced out and carved great blocks of marble from the mountain. This temple would be decorated like none before. Sculptors and craftsmen were gathered from all over the Greek world. With them stood Pericles, for he treated the building of the Parthenon as his own personal project. He selected architects, he selected the men who designed the plans. Pericles was directly involved in the planning process. Some protested that he was decking out the city like a prostitute. But when the building was completed in only 15 years, his critics were silenced.
The Parthenon was and still is the most glorious symbol of Athens' empire. Here was the spiritual heart of the city, the mark of her wealth, power, and artistic genius. When you first came through the door, you'd have been just stunned. You'd have been confronted immediately by an enormous 40-foot high statue of Athena in gold and ivory and studded with jewels. I think the, the impression of a statue of that size and with that kind of dressing must have truly overwhelming. Heracles had embellished his temple like no other. Though this astonishing statue has since been lost to history, other treasures from the Parthenon have survived for over 2,000 years. The most famous is the Parthenon Frieze, a 500-foot-long stretch of carved marble which ran around the inner wall of the temple. The Parthenon frieze is only two and a half inches thick at its maximum depth. And yet, in this space, the sculptors carved rank upon rank of crowded figures, a great procession of Athenians, glorious and elegant. Here, Pericles offered his fellow citizens a vision of themselves and their democratic state at the height of their glory. Democracy itself becomes heroized in that monument. It's a very democratic thing that wants to include all those citizens who participated in beating off the first great threat to democracy, which was from the Persians. These are ideals to which you can aspire. The monuments that Pericles built for his fellow Athenians still stand on the peak of the Acropolis. They remain the most striking legacy of classical Athens, an enduring testament to the achievements of the world's first democracy. <laughs>